Okay, big tractor power is up in the cab of a John Deere S690. We're harvesting winter wheat in western Kentucky, out in a thousand acre winter wheat field. And we're trying out live stream here for YouTube. Got a lot of big equipment running, and I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see the machinery. And I'm looking forward to uh, hearing all your comments and what you think of the harvest and try to answer a few questions about what's happening out here in the field. Here's the view from the S790 cap. We've got a 45 foot McDon draper head out here on the front of the combine. Out of Johnson's Farm in Nebraska. We're, uh, you can kind of look over here and see this is right out in the middle of a thousand acre field. Yes, uh, sorry, this is a 45 foot header see some of the combines coming by. Here comes a 9420R with a Kinsey 1105 grain cart. That's Kinsey's brand new cart for 2018. It's got that new track system. We'll watch it roll on by. You can also see they're filling up double crop soybeans into a 60 foot horse Panther air drill right over there. It's hooked up to a 9620R deer on triples. And those are, uh, this entire field's gonna get planted into soybeans today. And here we can watch the 9420R roll right in next to us and we're going to unload. we got a 28 and a half foot unloading auger on this S790. I'm going to zoom out here. The grain's going to pour out here at 3.8 bushels per second. This Kinsey 1105, you can heap up to 1200 bushels of grain on top of it and it'll unload all that at 750 bushels per second or uh, per minute, I apologize, per minute. So it can unload in about two minutes. And we can see our friend Tatum up here. He's a big tractor power fan. He's on Instagram too. And uh, he's driving the 9420R. Got another S790 cutting up ahead of us here. Uh, how many people work here during the harvest? There are a bunch of people. It takes a lot of people to move all these trucks. I think there's about 15 semi trucks going, eight combines four of these uh, 9420Rs going, and then you got three big air seeders running out here putting the double crop beans in. Oh, high landmark cattle from north central Kentucky. Glad you'll be uh, cutting wheat pretty soon. You can see that grain pouring out. And if we look up here in the back, you can see it's all but empty, and the new wheat's coming in. And uh, Tatum's gonna take off here and go find the next combine. Hi to Filter Family Farm. I'd be happy to try to answer questions. I just want to kind of show everybody what's going on in the field and so you can see a live get around a thousand acre wheat field here in western Kentucky. And if you look way over there across the field, uh, past the 9420 where those trees are, there's actually a 3,000 acre field on the other side of there. And I, I film at a farm that runs all Case IH on the other side of those trees. So a lot of big equipment here in western Kentucky. coming in. I know a lot of people always ask how much uh, it's yielding. This is um, this wheat. So far we're on the third day of harvest here in western Kentucky and um, it's yielding about anywhere from mid 60s and mid 70s. Uh, this particular field was actually planted on Halloween night and we had a lot of rain in October. Typically we're trying to um, plant wheat around October 10th but it rained and rained and rained in October and this field kind of got mudded in on Halloween night, you got about a four hour dry stretch and they got the three air drills out here and got it planted. Uh, someone had asked what kind of trucks the farm runs. They run uh, mainly uh, Mack Mac trucks. There's an International and uh, I think a Ford Global still mixed in there, but, and a Freightliner. But most of them are kind of a Kinsey blue and white uh, Mack truck. They kind of look cool because they match up with the Kinsey carts and I'm sure we'll see one of the trucks rolling around here pretty soon. You see another one of the combines is kind of way over there to the left. We're going to flip back around and you can get a look at some of the support trucks and stuff over here. There's that 9620R with the uh, 60 foot air drill. There's another one of the 9620Rs I think I saw rolling around at the back of the field, put those beans in. Well, hi from Kosovo, that's pretty neat. Low in South Dakota. Yes, we're in Western Kentucky harvesting the 2018 winter wheat crop. Definitely happy to 
take any of your questions as we're rolling along here. I wanted to just kind of take some time today. Usually I'm out uh, filming and uh, you know, it'll be a few days before you see this, but you can see it live. Uh, someone asked how many acres of farms harvesting. I think they do about 11,000 acres of wheat and it's all going to go into soybeans. And you can see again, they're loading up that um, 60 foot horse Anderson uh, Panther drilled over there. Hello from California. Thanks. Hi, Minnesota. Hello from the United Kingdom. Very cool to have people from overseas watching. Yes. Hi, Hawaii. That's pretty neat. Tommy's farm asks, how can I be a farmer? You know, it's a very, it's a very expensive. Um, I, I wish I was a farmer. I, I've enjoyed looking at all this equipment since I was a kid. And uh, it's just, it's a very expensive endeavor for the land and for the, um, the equipment. Hi from Albuquerque. So there's one of the 9620Rs right over here. And if you look, I'm gonna to try to zoom in. Here comes another one rolling up there, planting the uh, double crop soybeans right in behind these combines. Those drills will be running these combines right out of the field. Hello to Iowa. Definitely happy to answer any of your questions. We're just kind of finishing up this corner of the field and then we'll probably get in line with a couple other combines. Here we'll say hi to Matt. This is my friend Matt. He is I Matt on uh, Instagram, and uh, he's driving the combine. Matt will be running this combine through three harvest. He's cutting wheat here in June, and then uh, corn in August, and then he'll come right back to uh, this field and several others in the fall to cut soybeans. Hello from Br British Columbia, Canada. Hello from Washington D.C. We've got a lot of people from all over the country and different parts of the world. That's pretty exciting. Yes, this combine does have auto steer. Hello to Florida. We had a question about one of our videos on the 7520. You know, I'm not sure I did not film the 7520. My friend John filmed that one for me with his drone, uh, but it was definitely a nice find and that farm has two of them. No, these are not custom harvesters, Tristan. This, this is all uh, one farm's uh, combines. Uh, we don't really have any custom harvesters combine wise that i know of here in western kentucky i mean i think there's a few people that run maybe run one combine but this all all this machinery is part of one farm family farm here it is a family farm they've been uh farming in this area since the 1800s and uh, just built up a great great operation uh, matt we had a question how many years have you been working here at the farm uh, since 2006. Matt, matt's well, been here since years. 12 years Matt's been out here on the farm. How noisy is the combine cab? I, I think it's pretty quiet. I mean, there's the not really noisy. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting right by the air conditioner. If you, the speakers, there's the air. So we're going into the next section of the, the field and we'll probably see a couple of combines rolling on us. We've got eight class nine combines from John Deere out here. Uh, some new 2018 S790s, which we're up in the cab of and then uh, a couple S690s from last year in 2017. Uh, the, cab, the cab on an S790 is um, basically the same. The big change on a 790 from a 690 is right here. It's um, the control, it's got the same kind of arm contain controls as an 8R, or 9R, four wheel drive tractor, or a two wheel drive. Um, Matt, I don't know if you got a minute, you can show us kind of what the, you can see we're on auto steer. We can look here, Matt's on holding the wheel, and um, we got different uh, features here with the cameras, and you can just move it with a, you can see actually the clean grain elevators right there. That's the wheat moving through the clean elevator. So there's several camera options on this combine, and it's pretty neat. You can actually see how much uh, material, if there's any trash or broken kernels. And, uh, you know, of course, we can look out the back window here and uh, see it piling into the uh, 400 bushel bin behind us. What other functions does a combine have, Matt? We are uh, sharing data coverage and uh, information like labeling is the combine is right. there in front of me. So if you look up here, we've got a uh, combine cutting right in front of us and then he's that light blue trail yep. and, and uh, Matt's 790 combine is the dark blue. Now, only the 790s are connected with this because the, 
this monitor won't sync up with the older style. So all the time they plan on you know, they'll have to do theirs separate. But they won't, they won't, theirs won't show up on our map. So we're running about 3.1 miles per hour here. And uh, again, we've got 45 foot McDon FD145 uh, Draper head out here, cutting the wheat. Uh, again, the area is averaging, we're on the third day of harvest, anywhere from mid 60s to mid 70s. It was just a really wet fall and a cold spring. You know, sometimes we can get up into the 80s, 90s, even last year we were seeing 100 bushel yields. So just kind of a normal year. How many acres of storage capacity is the farm? The farm, the bins are over 2 million bushels now. So got a 2 million bushel bin system keeping up with all these combines. Uh, cutting about 11,000 acres of wheat on this farm this year. So we're just, uh, we'll get to see, um, here's kind of a neat shot. We got uh, two of the big combines with the 45 foot McDonald's. Crossed in one of the 9420R, so I'm going to just kind of let you guys watch that, and I'm happy to answer any questions as we're going along here. Class 9 combines, uh, they hold 100, well, 400 bushels of grain in, in their tanks. They got the 45 foot McDon heads on them. The S690s that are out here have uh, FD75 uh, drapers. There's a, this is a 790, I guess we're kind of getting sunned out here. Um, that's a 790 going by there with an FD145 header. And then we've got the 9420R, 420 horsepower deer with a brand new Kinsey 1105. These are brand new Kinsey carts this year. They've got the um, 05 series on all their 1100, 1300, and 1500 bushel carts. That cart will hold uh, 1200 bushels of grain heaped up. Here's one of the S690s, that's a 2017 model going by there. Yeah, those new Kinsey carts will dump out 750 bushels of uh, grain per minute, so they'll make a big difference. Uh, we've got a question from Ethan about what is the difference between the new McDon heads and older heads. Uh, can you kind of tell us, Matt, what... Um... They've, uh, just some small changes, uh, nothing really major. Just They added, uh, they put the fingers on the reel closer together. Um, the, the draper speed, you can control from right here, this little dial. Uh, you can turn your belts up faster or slower. And um, basically that's about it, really. Uh, it's about the same. The drum, uh, I think the drum in the center moves faster. It's got different style of metal yep. fingers in it. Yeah, there's a drum up here that helped uh, we come off the belts, and uh, we'll see it in a second here. There, there it is. So you can see that drum with the fingers there. That's probably, the drapers do an awesome job, but that may be the one limitation they can get a little bunched up, especially in soybeans. So here we're coming back around for another pass. We're using uh, John Deere Green Star. 3,000 receivers, so we're actually um, right here on a perfect 45-foot swath. You can see Matt's got it on the auto steer. Nobody's um, driving the combine, and then also you can see you see the blue, dark blue. That's uh, Matt 790, and then we've got another 790 up there uh, making the light blue stripe just ahead of us. So they've got data sharing on here. Someone asked a few minutes ago if the farm has quad tracks. Uh, no, they mainly run uh, 9620Rs on triple tires. They do have a Challenger MT875E on tracks, which they really like uh, for heavy tillage and for pulling these 60 foot air seeders. For those joining in, um, we can actually see one of these 60 foot air seeders just over here getting filled up with soybean seeds. This entire field is gonna go into soybeans uh, this afternoon as the combines are clearing off the wheat. Double crop beans account for about 95% of the beans raised here uh, in this part of Western Kentucky. Uh, John Deere Farmer's asking how full is he? I'd say he's getting close to the top. 60%. All right, we're at 60% right now. Uh, the back window is a wall of wheat, so I'd, I'd say we'll be dumping out here in just a few minutes. 
So again, uh, I was talking about those air drills over there. One of the questions I get a lot of times is why do they have these 620 horsepower tractors on these 60 foot air drills? Uh, we hear from a lot of the guys up in Canada, they run 450 horse tractors. The main reason is, you know, it's, it's 95 degrees out here today. This ground is hard and dry. And, uh, you know, we're also, I mean, they're going right into green straw. I mean, there's straw out here and you need all that horsepower to uh, move that, uh, move those beans into the ground. And they're running a hostile drill, so the shanks are digging in there to plant those beans. So we can see the auger is going to be coming out here. We'll see it's a 28 and a half foot uh, grain auger. And we're going to come up here to a Kinsey 1105 grain cart. And you can see it's got that new style track uh, that Kinsey just put out. Here we go. So this auger again is uh, 28 and a half feet long. It's unloading 3.8 bushels per second of wheat. So it's really pouring it out there. And they can heap on 1200 bushels of wheat onto that cart before it heads back to the truck. What's the advantage of the new track? It just has a lot more given flexibility. Uh, I was out here the other day and we had to go over a railroad track between fields and they just have a lot more uh, flexibility and rolling over things. Oh, hi Scruffy, appreciate you making all the comments on our videos each time. I'm glad you're here for the live stream. You're definitely one of our top Big Tractor Power fans. You can see that wheat just pouring out 3.8 bushels per second. And go back here and you can see it just pouring out of the bin and uh, the new wheat's coming in from the rotor. Any chance of a farm tour? Yeah, we can maybe do a live stream farm tour this winter. Walk around and see some of the equipment in the sheds. How reliable is the S790? Uh, this is the third day for this combine in the field. Seems to be doing a good job so far. There goes another 790. We've got Tatum out there on that 9420R. There's four of those in the Kinsey carts out in the field. Uh, three of the new 1105s and there's still an 1100 uh, rolling around out here as well. But here's kind of a neat shot. You've got three of the four carts just ahead of us. Might be able to kind of see some of the semi trucks out there ahead as well. What number of horses under the hood of the combine? Uh, this combine is 543 horsepower. It's got a power boost up to 580. I was up here the other day with Matt and it actually uh, really, I'd say it got up to the 580. What, what's the message you get when you get into this like down wheat here? Low engine speed. Low engine speed. How many combines? Uh, there are eight out here. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see them all together. They spread out throughout the day. The best time to see them is in the morning when they're doing service. If I ever filmed in Florida, no, I would like to. I'd love to get down there and see some of the sugar cane and the other crops. And I know you guys have a lot of dairy and uh, corn and everything down there. Uh, we have not had rain yet. It's been a nice dry week. We had three inches of rain a week ago and uh, it's been nice now. How many hectares are in this field? I don't know. I, you know, if you, I can tell you we're in a thousand acre field here. If you want to Google, Google the hect, hect acre, uh, to acres that'll probably tell you but this is a thousand acre field if you've watched our video recently of a big thunderstorm it's just a couple down of the big tractor power uh, feed of videos this is the same field uh, this was in wheat back in 2015 and we had a big thunderstorm roll up and uh, I was kind of way over by the trees there filming and was glad to get picked up by a combine or I was going to get drenched so I got some footage of the combines all racing across this field to get out of the thunderstorm into our next section here in the field. Uh, let's see, Whitty Farms got a 4555. That's one of my favorite John Deere's. I, you know, one thing I like about John Deere tractors is they've got a lot of double model numbers like 4555, uh, like the 4440, 8220, 9220. It's just kind of neat how they have those double model numbers uh, in between a lot of the machines. So that, that's really cool, Whitty Farms. How often do you have to refuel an S six S seven ninety every morning? Yeah, so they fuel just in the morning, and uh, what? How long do you guys run for? About eight a.m. to, to eight a.m. to ten p.m. in wheat. So you can see some of the combines cutting out here. 
uh, tractor man PJ at Gleaner S S88. I'd love to film one of those. I've filmed a Gleaner S78 and an S97. I'd like to find the 88. That'd be really cool. How many cameras are on the combine? I think there are two. We can see the. Um, all right. We got a 11,000 acre. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't see that comment on. We had a comment on how to convert those hectares. How many gallons? Well, I'm sorry, you guys. Things are. How long does it take to cut a thousand acre field? So, uh, how long will it take you guys to get through this? We started last night, and we'll probably get done tonight. It took about a day. So it takes about a day for eight combines uh, with 45 foot McDon headers like this one to uh, cut a thousand acres. So this is always the farm I start at first filming because you guys finish up on me fast. Is this the same farm? Yes, this is the same farm that I just put the video up of yesterday on their first day of wheat harvest. Uh, for those just joining in, we are in western Kentucky uh, harvesting the 2018 wheat crop. I'm up in the cab of a John Deere S790. Hello to Germany there. I'm uh, just trying to see your comments here as we go. You run a Gleaner, Gleaner Combine, a versatile tractor. It's a very nice tractor, man. Are you are you up in Indiana, kind of above Evansville, Tractor Man, PJ? So we can see we're cutting across the field. You see all the wheat uh, pouring in behind us. Yeah, I need to come up and see you, Tractor Man, PJ. I'd love to film some of your versatiles and see that Gleaner. I know, uh, I think Mike Les gets to your farm. Mike Les has got a great YouTube channel of uh, big equipment. And Do I have any good friends on this farm? Yes, I have some good friends uh, that own this farm and also some of the people like uh, Matt here. Uh, what is the moisture level of the wheat? Right now we're showing about 13 and a half. All right, we're at 13 and a half percent on the wheat. Very cool on the potatoes, Tractor Man PJ. Uh, I'll uh, see if maybe Mike Les and I can get up there and see him. So we're uh, going to kind of get in line here with a couple of the other big Class 9 combines. I think we've got a 790 and a 690 out there ahead of us. And if you look out the side window, you can see the dust coming up of um, the other combines. I think I, let's see if I can count them. We got one. Two, three, four, five, and we're number six. What is the nearest big town? Um, we're probably right on the state line by Clarksville, Tennessee, and uh, Hopkinsville, Kentucky is about 20 miles up the road. Can you look on a Google map to see where we are? Uh, we're in Lafayette, Kentucky. You can find the small town of Lafayette, Kentucky and uh, probably travel just a little bit east from town, you're gonna see this field. And we're actually right next to a 3,000 acre field. You see that tree line over there, right on the other side of those trees is a 3,000 acre field. And that's a Case IH farm that I film at uh, quite often. Any Zetor tractors in the USA? Yeah, uh, there are. We actually have a Zetor dealer. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still selling, but I see the sign and I saw a few Zetors traded in at our local McCormick dealer uh, recently. Is that S790 combine with track? Nope, no tracks here. We've, uh, I think these have got the largest duels mat that deer offers. We're going across a little wet spot here that got filled up with uh, grass. You can see it kind of clipping along and now we'll get back into the wheat. Yeah, that's pretty green, yes. Yeah, this, uh, I mentioned earlier in the video, this field was planted on Halloween night. Uh, we had a lot of rain. Typically, wheat is planted in Western Kentucky after October 10th, but it just rained and rained and rained in October. And uh, this field got planted Halloween night in about a four hour window between storms. So here, here we go. This is kind of what I always want to try to show you guys. We've got, uh, we're gonna look over here. One, two, we're combine number three. Four, five, and six is over there, and there may be two more of them hiding out here somewhere. But the combines just get spread out throughout the day, and it's it's often hard to film them. I'd love to get these combines in a big V coming across the field, but we'd have to get a drone out here. Are these combines owned or leased? You know, I 
Joe, that's a good question. I don't usually try to get in the farms business uh, where I'm filming. Um, it, this is a family farm and they, they just do a great job of what they're doing. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna zoom in there. We got one combine there. We'll count ourselves as number two. And you can see three, four, and then number five is coming across there. And there's number six kind of blinking. He's getting full and number seven. So we're looking for one more combine out here. And this combine is actually um, decaled number eight in the in the fleet. Okay. Matt says the eighth one is coming along here. Who's the operator? Uh, this is Matt. We'll have him say hi again. Hello. Matt's been working here on the farm. Uh, for about 12 years. He grew up on a New England farm and uh, he was a part of our Toy Tractor Times Toy Talk where I featured a lot of this equipment through pictures over the years and he wanted to come work on a big farm in Kentucky. So here come some of the grain carts. There are four John Deere 9420Rs with Kinsey grain carts, three brand new 1105s and an older 1100 out here. How is the yield IH guy? Uh, we're seeing mid 60s to mid 70s this year. Uh, it just it was a really cold and wet fall, and the spring wasn't any better. Well, Matt says it's in the 80s, so we're looking a little better. Jumping up there to 88, that's that's pretty good. Again, this this field was planted on Halloween night. I was actually out here uh, filming as they were kind of mudding around, uh, getting that weed in. It's not ideal to plant in the mud, but it, it just got to be that time of year. How many acres can eight combines cover in a day? About a thousand acres. We're in a thousand acre field. They started here last night and they will finish up this evening. Here's some kind of neat. Um, the lead combine here is uh, completely full. So he's gonna cut a little hole in the field and drop out. And one of the grain carts is gonna drop in there uh, so he can unload. Have they had any breakdowns in the 790s yet? Have you guys had any breakdowns, Matt? Matt says no, everything's going good. This is the third day out um, on the harvest for the 790s and they're doing well. Again, we can see that one over there. He's gonna cut that hole. Uh, we'll see if we get to see the card come up here. So these combines have a 28 and a half foot unloading auger. We can see it swinging out there. That's an FD-145 McDon Draper head on the combine. So that means that's a S790 coming by us. And we're up in the cab of an S790 as well. How much will we get for wheat um, here in the United States? Sorry, I, I'm really not. Is it? This is a family farm that we're on. This is a, a family that's been here in the community since the 1800s and they've just built up a very good operation, very well respected in the community and liked by everybody. So right now we're um, kind of cutting a new hole into the field. There's an S690 2017 model. Uh, so the combines are full and waiting on the cart. So we're going to swap up the order and the line and uh, take over the lead. We've got some more combines over here to our right. All right, here we go. We're going to back up and move over there. Will you plant multiple crops of wheat in one year? No, uh, this field's actually getting planted into uh, soybeans right now. There are two 60-foot uh, horse panther drills on 96, 20-yard ears running right behind these combines. I apologize if I'm not seeing everybody's questions. They kind of come by fast. Do they let me drive sometimes? Uh, you know, I'm so busy filming. I, I just have never taken the time to uh, to drive one of these machines. I, I'd love to, but you know, you guys want to see more videos, so I tried to get to five or six farms on Saturday and get everything filmed. How many employees are there? There are a bunch. I tell you, there are 15 semi trucks uh, keeping up with eight Class Nine John Deere combines out here. There are four. Uh, 9420R four-wheel drives with 1,000 bushel Kinsey carts, and then we've got three air drills running on the farm right now to plant beans. Tractor Man PJ asked how Toy Tractor Times is going. Uh, it's going great. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I also have the Toy Tractor Times, uh, which is a YouTube channel, and I just got back from the Summer Farm Toy Show in Iowa. Had a great time out there. 
Um, got to film a lot of toys, getting some of the videos from the show up on Toy Tractor Times YouTube. And I filmed some really kind of neat classic equipment. We got a White Farm Equipment 60 uh, tractor that was painted in Moline Yellow. I think there were about 17 of those made. I, I filmed that in Iowa, Cultivating Corn. And uh, my friend John was out there with me, and he got a 2 plus 2 uh, plant soybeans, and that video will come up soon as well. Are these, uh, how are the McDon heads versus the Deer Flex Drapers? Uh, honestly, most of the farms in this area are running McDon's. Uh, I think the Deers do a good job, but everybody's kind of sticking with the McDon heads uh, as far as cutting soybeans and wheat here. Oh, I just saw a comment about someone being from Connecticut. I think Matt, you're originally from Connecticut, right? Yep. Yep. Farmington, Connecticut. Matt's from Farmington, Connecticut, and we are out here near Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and Clarksville, Tennessee. We're near a little town of Lafayette, Kentucky. What is the market for grain uh, for this wheat? Uh, a lot of this winter wheat is uh, sold to uh, Seamer Milling here, and I believe that a lot of this wheat is going to end up in McDonald's hamburger buns. So if you're eating at McDonald's, you're probably eating um, Western Kentucky wheat that we see harvested here. Well, we're kind of in a spot where we're by ourselves. We're in the lead. Uh, hello to Mount Vernon, Kentucky. Uh, if you've got questions, I'll just kind of keep the camera ahead and try to answer your questions and watch them go by. Hello from Eastern Long Island. Very cool. I know you've got some potatoes out in Long Island. I'm always interested in seeing the farms there. We've got a Norfolk, Connecticut with Scott Charlton here. Here, uh, we had a question, uh, hello from Southwest Missouri. We asked about the, the farm's trucks. They, they mainly run Max right now. They're painted kind of a Kinsey blue with white. And there is a yellow, is that a Freightliner, Matt? The yellow truck? The Mac also. Okay, yellow Mac. That's the Chaser edition. Yeah. <laughs> That's the caution truck. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got someone who's planting wheat in Kenya and Tanzania. Hello to Fort Kent, Maine. Are you going to be in Montana? Yeah, you know, you're talking about Welkers. I enjoy w watching Welkers. I'm friends with the Williams brothers who own the Big Bud brand name and they own the Big Bud 747. Uh, I'd love to get up to Montana. I was there in 2007. Uh, I probably won't be headed that way this year, but sometime I would like to get up there again. I've been to Big, Mount, uh, Big Sandy, Montana before. Hello to East Tennessee. Hello to Southern Wisconsin. I've got a friend, John, that films for Big Tractor Power there. Is there a video for HFW? Is it How Farms Work? Yes, I visited How Farms Work uh, last Sunday, and I will be going to the How Farms Work uh, Farm Day on June 23rd. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm looking forward to getting up there with Ryan at the How Farms Work Day. But I, I did visit his farm for about an hour last Sunday, did a very short interview, and that will be up um, here probably maybe tomorrow on Big Tractor Power YouTube. You just finished planting wheat in South Africa about three weeks ago. Yeah, you guys, um, you guys are on total opposites of us. When you're planting wheat, we're harvesting, and we'll be planting our wheat when you guys harvest in South Africa. Well, we've got 301 people on the live stream. Thanks for joining today. Hello to Bedford County, PA. So for people that might be just joining in, uh, up in the cab of a John Deere S790 combine, uh, we've got a 45-foot McDon FD-145 uh, draper head. You can see the wheat coming in here. We're almost up to the headland. Oh, we've got someone here from Mexico. John Deere 7720, very 8820. Those are some of my favorite combines. Hello to Germany. Thank you, Marcus. I'm a high production logger. Yeah, logging equipment's really neat. I'm always interested in seeing that. I've got some old International Harvester brochures on their logging equipment and, and John Deere's uh, logging equipment too. Oh, hi, uh, JL Smith. It's a pretty good crop. Uh, I think we're just hit about 90 bushels here. I just looked on the screen and now it's uh, about 88. Hello to France. Michigan farming, just finished planting corn. Nice, 4, 420 John Deere and a two row corn planter. Yeah. And we're turning around now. We've got the auger out, so we'll be looking for a grain cart. We'll start seeing some of the action again. We've got two more combines behind us, and you kind of see the trucks loading over there. Here we see that uh, cart's totally heaped up. Got probably about 1,200 bushels on that Kinsey 1105 going by. He 
definitely is full. <laughs> These uh, these combines, uh, about three loads or 400 bushels a piece, uh, they'll load those uh, Kinsey carts right up. And it looks like we're going to come to a stop here and wait for a, a cart. What transmissions are on the tractor? I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to look in the brochure. Hello from Germany. Thank you for watching. Hello to Greece. I'm very honored to have it. Oh, here comes a 9420R. Organic wheat, that's pretty neat, deer hunter. That's got to be a little bit of a challenge to uh, raise. So this combine's on loading 3.8 bushels of wheat uh, per second, coming out of 400 bushel bin. Hello to Chile, very neat. You're planting, middle of planting wheat, uh, just finished corn. Hello to Argentina. So you can see some of the combines coming across here. Here's something neat, we can kind of see it, the window reopening up behind us. How many acres is the field that I'm in? It's 1,000 acres. They just started cutting it last night and they will finish it today. I'd say we're probably about halfway through right now. You can see the wheat coming down there. 3.8 bushels per second coming out of this uh, 400 bushel bin. Hello from Scotland. Hello to Denmark. What about the yield? Um, we've been seeing mid 70s, uh, mid 60s. Uh, right now we're uh, 92 bushels cutting in this section of the field. Hello to Hodgenville, Kentucky. So we're emptied out and the uh, tractor and cart are off to the next stop. How long is the harvest? Uh, usually about 10 days. If uh, right now it's totally sunny, so I mean, they might you might get it done very quickly. This farm raises about 11,000 acres of wheat, and if they get out in these big fields like this, uh, you know, they're going to cut a thousand acres of wheat off in a day. I am in western Kentucky, Zachary, uh, western part of the state, uh, about 100 miles from the Mississippi River. Yep, the grain carts are definitely rolling. We've got four of them out here. And you can see they're kind of waiting on trucks. We may come to a stop here soon because I only see two trucks over there waiting there. There's 15 trucks keeping these combines going. Uh, again, wanted to share if we look way across the field, if you kind of see that dust going, that's a John Deere 9620R with a 60-foot horse panther air drill putting beans in right behind these combines. This field will all be in uh, soybeans. Uh, by tomorrow. Little Hungary, very cool. So here we can see three Class 9 John Deere combines, probably some 790s and 690s mixed together here, cutting across a thousand acre field. We've got 328 people on the live stream, really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, hello to Roux uh, for a shout out. Do you know if anyone is willing to take a job? Uh, yes, this is all double crop, Sylvian. What's the difference between a 690 and a 790? The key difference is right here. The main difference between the two combines is this, um, if I can zoom out, uh, is this armrest. That's the same controls that a John Deere 8R and 9R tractor have. And uh, that that's really the main difference. And maybe Matt can show us again. It's got some computer technology here. We can actually look in. We've got cameras, we can look right inside the clean grain return and we can see if there's any uh, cracked kernels or foreign material coming up there. It looks pretty clean right now. And uh, you can see the wheat coming in uh, right behind the window here. But Matt's got the camera right inside the combine. Then we've got technology sharing. Uh, if you look here, you see that deep blue, that's where this combine's gone. And the light blue shows you where the other combines have gone. Yeah, thank you, Daniel Walker. Yeah, we're out in a thousand acre field. Okay. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's take a look out the window here. We've got four combines, uh, three of them in a row coming right across. 
It's always a challenge. I, I love getting out in this field and seeing all this equipment but it's, uh, they never usually lined up like this, so it's a pretty nice sight to see three of them coming. You got two of the four grain carts going, and if you look over there, you can see the second air drill uh, way to the left. I'm gonna try to zoom in. That's a 9620R with a 60-foot horse Panther air drill putting soybeans in, and then there's another one kind of just over there kicking up some dust. So let's uh, kind of focus on the combines, though. So this whole field's getting planted into soybeans right behind these combines. So we've got a bunch of equipment out there. How many hours on this combine? Not very many. It's only been out here three days. 35. 35 hours on this combine. Just came in from the dealer lot and hit the field uh, three days ago. So here we are. This is probably a nice pretty shot. I kind of wish I was out in the ground filming this for Big Tractor Power YouTube, but I'm glad you guys are getting to see it live. Do you know Purse? Do you, do you do I know the farm personally? Yes, I've been out at this farm since year 2000. How many hours do they work? Uh, they usually start around 8 a.m. and work till 10 p.m. at night cutting the wheat. Corn season, that's a little bit longer. You guys go to about 1 a.m. Cut. So I, when I, I always try to film this farm first because they work some long hours to get, get the job done. So we've got an S690 in the lead. It's got the older style FD75 uh, McDon on it. There are a total of eight combines out here cutting wheat and they're all class nine machines. What ground speed is the combine at? Uh, we're at 2.5 miles per hour right now. Oh, 3.5. 3.5 miles per hour. So again, uh, it's always neat getting out here and seeing, you can see that air seeder is rolling right behind that combine, uh, just, just a few acres away. Really appreciate everybody um, tuning in this afternoon. This is kind of an impromptu thing to check out a live stream. Does the farm purchase or lease its iron? You know, I really don't like to get in the business of the farms I film at. I'm just here for the equipment, but this is a family farm and they cover a lot of acres and they do it with the minimal amount of equipment they can. They just have a really good, well-run operation. What do, um, there's a question, do they bale the straw? No, uh, they do not bale the straw. They use it as mulch. The, this is all going into soybeans and that, that actually acts as a fertilizer and a mulch for the beans. It's gonna hold the moisture in because it's gonna get hot out here in Western Kentucky over the summer. And we'll, we'll see 100 degree temperatures for several days in a row. So it makes it hard for these beans to, um, to grow. And that's what the straw gets used for. These are combine crews that work on multiple farms. No, um, this is, this is all, all eight combines belong to this farm here in Western Kentucky. This is not a custom crew. This is just one farm. They're going to cut about 11,000 acres of wheat here in the next few days. Hello to Saskatchewan, Canada. You guys probably have a lot of wheat up there. Do I know the test weight? What do we know? I haven't talked to the guys. We, we don't know the test weight. Right now we're seeing 81 bushels going across this part of the field. How many bushels of the combine hold? 400. What type of wheat is it? Branson. Branson wheat. I'm glad I've got Matt here because usually I'm texting him at 11 o'clock at night when I'm working these videos. Are, are the beans shipped to the, the no, um, the farm has about a 2 million bushel grain bin system that they're stored at. Oh, Jared, I'm sorry to hear you're losing your crop. That's, that's never good. We've definitely had some bad years here in Kentucky too. Why are we so slow? Uh, just pushing 45 feet of wheat through here. That's just the, the speed the combine's comfortable at moving through it right now. We're in 82 bushel wheat. How many bushels per acre? We're, let's see, 82, 83 bushels on the screen right now. What do the employees do uh, when they're through combining? Matt, do you want to tell us what you do? I know you do a lot of welding and fixing in the shop. Yeah, a lot of maintenance and welding and uh, working on the trucks and servicing combines, basically all the, all so, the stuff that needs to be done. <laughs> Anything that everybody else does on a farm, we basically got the same stuff. We have cattle and uh, we bale hay and all that kind of stuff too. So. 
So the job never ends. No. So you're employed year round on the farm yes, and full time year round. So Matt's uh, Matt's uh, one of the combine guys out here. We're in Western Kentucky. Someone asked what state. Yes, the combine does have a refrigerator. I'm I'm sitting on it. <laughs> um, hello to Germany. So Matt works on the farm year round, and he. Uh, he runs a sprayer so he'll start out the year field wise in a sprayer in january putting down nitrogen and then uh he'll spray it again uh then matt hops in a planter tractor he'll be out here with a 9420r and a 24 okinsey planting corn he'll spray wheat again and corn uh matt's the mower and the baler guy uh, he runs the mower and then one of the round balers on the farm for their cattle and then matt takes over on the combine for wheat uh, corn in August and soybeans in October. Then Matt will be running a big wishing disc and plowing up the corn, getting ready for the next wheat crop. And then he hops onto a tractor with a ripper in November. And then he spends his, uh, spends most of the winter in the shop uh, welding on uh, shanks on all, for all the rippers. This farm runs, is it 11 rippers? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, 11 rippers. So Matt's got his work cut out just working on those all winter. Well, we're in a straight stretch. I'll, I'll try to watch for some questions now, uh, if you've got any. Oh, we've got someone from Kenya. It's midnight over there. Thank you for watching. What setting changes the most? This combine's pretty much automated. It adjusts how long is the field? Uh, Adam, I, I'm going to guess it's at least a mile across, right? Yeah. Uh, we're about a mile across. To, uh, I was going to share again. You can see that tree line over there. That's a 3,000 acre field on the other side of there. I film out there with some Case IH equipment and it's two and a half miles across the 3,000 acres, but it's about a mile across the 1,000 acre field here. Is this a 24 seven operation? No, they work from eight to 10 in wheat. What county? Uh, we're in Christian County, Kentucky near Lafayette. turn around here you see the draper head it's a 45 foot mcdon and looks like we've already cleaned off this section in the time we've been talking see all the combines coming up behind us again they're planting soybeans just over there is youtube my full-time job no i also own the uh, toy tractor times magazine so i do a kind of a mix of things Yes, McDon is made in Saskatchewan and uh, just a great header. It's very popular here in Western Kentucky for cutting wheat and beans. Looks like we've got a 45 foot pass we're gonna come in. How many acres per day? Uh, all eight combines are cutting about a thousand acres a day. How many, um, no, I, someone asked if I owned any land or tractors. No, I'm not a farmer. I just enjoy uh, covering farm equipment. Matt, how many acres do you cover with this combine per day? Oh, probably a, on a good day in this field, I could probably do 100 to 125. That's with no breakdowns or yeah. any trouble. So, uh, Jared's asking what um, land sells for here. I, I think it goes for eight to eleven thousand acres, uh, eight to eleven thousand dollars an acre. Uh, someone just asked about tobacco. Uh, the tobacco is all planted. They're just cultivating and spraying it now. So you can see the GPS here is uh, working perfectly. We're exactly 45 feet wide coming down this stretch. And Matt has got his hands off the steering wheel, hands free. And here, here's a neat thing. Uh, it's got data sharing. We can look up here on the monitor. The light blue streaks are two other 790s, S790 combines that cut. And we're squeezing right in between where they've been. How many acres does this farm cover? They're running over 30,000 acres. They raise corn, soybeans, winter wheat, tobacco, and hay. How many liters of diesel does the combine take? I'd have to look that up in the brochure. I, I don't know that one off the top of my head. No, this farm does not raise cotton. You have to, you have to go maybe about 120 miles from here to see cotton. Is the belt more efficient than, yes, uh, I, I can say without a doubt that the belt on a draper head is much better than an auger head. 
what town are we close to, Jared? We're near Lafayette, Kentucky. It's a very small town. Uh, we're near, the biggest town we're near is Clarksville, Tennessee. We're probably about 10 miles. Here goes 9420, just hauling across the field. It's probably gonna loop around here and catch us. Uh, this, we're pretty close to Hopkinsville, Kentucky. That's kind of home base. So here you can kind of see the combines are spread out. Uh, and again, uh, Brendan's asking if we've ever hit a stump. I hope Matt has not. I've, have got, not. A, I've got a friend that's on a New Holland farm that I film at. And yes, they hit a stump last year and it was not good for the draper head. So we try to stay away from stumps. Here comes that 9420, zooming in. Our friend Tatum is over there. And we're gonna start dumping some doubt on this cart. Yes, this is the same group that's in that thunderstorm video. We're actually in the same field. This, uh, I filmed that video back in 2015 in this field where a big thunderstorm rolled in. Nope, no straw. This is all getting planted into soybeans. Uh, this is unloading uh, 3.8 bushels per second. That cart will hold 1,200 bushels. So I, I get to film in this field quite a bit, and it's always neat to get out in a 1,000-acre field like this to see the equipment. Yes, the grain is stored, Daniel. Uh, they've got a over two million bushel, maybe up to three million bushel grain system to hold all this stuff. Here we can see that the grain is uh, emptying out again very quickly. 400 bushel grain tank back there. You see the wheat pouring in. We've been consistently running at about 82 bushels out here. Yeah, Adam, this is the, that is the new Kinsey track system there. And uh, they seem very happy with it. It's got a little more flex and give to it. It does a nice job out here. How many tons to the bushel? I apologize, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to Google that. Yeah, I do ride with a grain cart. I'll get out there and film it. We're just up here in the combine so I can keep my phone plugged in. Matt, do you ever play farming simulator or is uh, being up here in the combine simulation enough? No, this is all the simulation I need right here. <laughs> this is about as uh, yeah, as I, video games as I get. I, I would love to uh, play Farm Simulator as well. My son likes to play it, but I, I'm so busy filming the. I'm so busy filming the real stuff. I, I don't get time to play. Well, we're up to 416 people. What is the moisture? I think we're about 13 and a half percent down to 13 right now. Am I going to be live streaming on a daily basis? No, uh, I will live stream again if I can get out and do something like this. Uh, maybe we'll do a farm tour or something. I will be doing more live streams and if I get one planned, uh, I'll give a little more notice. This was kind of impromptu today. I just wanted you guys to be able to see all these big combines out in the thousand acre field. Can we see a face reveal? Sure. I never show my face because I think you guys would rather see the equipment, but here I am sitting up in the cab of the 790 combine i appreciate everybody watching all the big tractor power videos and it's just fun to share what i'm seeing out in the field i'm glad we can do this live stream today hello to peter see the wheat coming in there we're coming i'm gonna flip back around so you guys um, can see the equipment we're coming here into uh the farm does a lot of work on drainage and they've got a lot of these uh, drainage spots out so We'll kind of loop around here and you can kind of see the draper head flex over the hump from the drainage. We had a tropical storm come through about a week ago and uh, knocked down some of the wheat, unfortunately, but this draper head does a great job. You can see it just skim that off, flex right over that hump. How many acres does a combine run in a year? Well, about six, about six this, this combine by itself will see about 6,000 acres. Oh, glad everybody's enjoying the live stream. How do I stream from a combine? I've uh, just used the YouTube, just clicked it into my, uh, use the YouTube app on my phone. What kind of wheat is this? The Branson wheat? Yep. Are you going to do a hundred years of John Deere tractor celebration in Waterloo, Iowa? You know, I would love to be there. Uh, unfortunately, just time-wise, I want to be able to film the wheat harvest here in Kentucky. I am going to the Howe Farms Work Farm Day which is June 23rd in Potosi, Wisconsin from 10 to 4. So I'll be up there, uh, hope to get to meet some people. I was at uh, Ryan's farm last Sunday and just stopped in to donate some door prizes. So looking forward to getting back up there. 
anything really different from an S690 to a 790, the main difference is this control center over here. That's the same kind of control center in an 8R or 9R John Deere tractor. That's that's really the big difference. Also, both in the way Yeah, Kyle, John Deere 9500 is a great combine. I, I need to get out there and film a 9500. Hello to the United Kingdom. What is our ground speed? Uh, we are running about 3.3 miles per hour right now. Do I ever use track combines? Well, I film track combines. I don't own a combine myself. Uh, Kloss is going to be having its North American uh, combine clinic. They're going to be bringing their dealers in from all over the country here to Hopkinsville, Kentucky next week. Uh, this farm that I'm on right now is going to be hosting that. Uh, so we'll be able to see some Lexian combines coming up on Big Tractor Power YouTube. Um, I think we've got a Zerion four-wheel drive coming in from that. I, I was driving out to Iowa last Sunday or Saturday and I saw uh, a Zerion going by and there's one at our dealer, so I suspect it's in. And they've got a 780 TT uh, coming in for this Kloss camp and I'm really excited to see the biggest Lexion built. Hello to United Kingdom and Australia. But then uh, we'll get some, hopefully get some drone footage of the Kloss camp. It's going to be out. This farm has a 2,800 acre wheat field. Uh, I filmed corn out there last fall. We're in a thousand acre field and we're going to hopefully get up to that 2,800 acre field and film the uh, Kloss combines. And a few years ago, it's one of our most popular big tractor power videos. The farm got all of its John Deere combines and all the Lexington combines were out in that 2,800 acre field. And I got to film them all making a loop. I think it, the title of that video, if you want to see it, is 11 combines and harvest wheat in 21 minutes. Do I ever farm in Southern Illinois? Yeah, sometimes, if I can find a good farm, I definitely, uh, I was up that way, I was in Urbana last fall, I got some great classic equipment at Jake Ziegler's farm, he's got a YouTube channel. Uh, hello from France, that's pretty neat that you got a 9600 over in France. I really appreciate everyone tuning in today. How long does it take for them to harvest this field? It takes them about a day. They started cutting out here last night and they uh, they will finish today. Have I seen a Fent Ideal Combine? Agco is introducing that in Canada, uh, I think this week, and I'm hoping to see it in a field in Illinois this fall. It'll probably be a Challenger model. Although Agco hasn't exactly said what's which ideal combine is coming to the u.s but i from what i've heard i think they're going to just offer challengers here at massey and fenton europe do they use auto steer they sure do you can look down here no hands 45 foot head out there just cutting across what county is this it's christian county kentucky so here you can see we're out of trucks um, you can see all the pickup trucks for the farm uh, the fuel truck they've got a full-time fuel truck just to keep these eight combines going and you can kind of see all the header wagons and the carts are waiting on trucks and we could be coming to a stop here. Yeah, oh, we'll see one of the trucks. Here's one of the farm runs mostly Mack trucks. It's kind of cool. They're all painted Kinsey blue. They match the carts really nicely. Hello to Indiana. How many employees are on the farm and how many acres? This farm runs about 30,000 acres in a season. And uh, employee-wise, uh, just kind of give you a rough overview. We got 15 semi trucks running today, and we've got four grain carts, eight combines, and then there are three tractors with air drills uh, running, planting soybeans in right behind these combines. Sorghum harvest is underway in Texas. I bet you guys are getting close to corn harvest too. How far have the trucks got to go back to the farm? Uh, were you about 20 miles from the farm? Yeah, it's like 20, 25. So. Yep. Do I come to New York State? I grew up in New York State, and I do get up there occasionally, and I have a friend that uh, films for me up in the Rochester, New York area. Here we are in some down wheat. Uh, we had a tropical storm come through here last week, and it kind of got some spots. Does it take practice to get the cart and the combine spacing correct? Oh, just have to be careful and drive in a straight line. You can kind of see how these uh, draper heads do in down wheat. You can see it just shaving it right off and getting everything in the header.
Does Matt run anhydrous? Yes, he does. I forgot to mention that. And Matt, is it, this year he was spraying though, so he got out of that job. Are there radios in the cab? Yes, there are. It is on mute right now, but Matt definitely likes to listen to music up here. When I film, I've got to ask him to turn it off because YouTube does not like you having anybody else's music in the background. Where in New York am I from? I grew up near Rochester, New York, and I live in Western Kentucky now. Here we are getting the last. So we've been out here, we've been live streaming just over an hour. And uh, do you have any idea how many acres we've covered, Matt, in an hour here? We've cleared off a good section of this field. Auburn, I've been to Auburn several times. Great area, Monroe Tractor is one of my favorite dealers over there. How's the wheat yielding? Uh, we've been seeing about 82 bushels consistent here coming across the field for the last uh, 30 minutes. They're cutting about 1,200 bushels an hour. They're cutting 1,200 bushels an hour. Yeah, the combine head is an FD-145 uh, McDon head. It's 45 feet wide. You can get a close-up view of it cutting across this down wheat. It always seems a shame you get so close to wheat harvest and it's looking great and then a big storm like the tropical storm that came in from the Gulf kind of got it, but not too badly. I, I know, uh, I think in 2014, we had just, the whole field was like this. It was just down. Is it, It's raining in Mayfield. We may, we may see some rain up here tonight then. When the drill's moving in, yeah, the drills are way over there where you can see all those trucks. Hello from Ireland. 36 bushels equals a ton. I will try to remember that. Thank you, Brendan. I know we have a lot of European uh, viewers, and uh, I'm just not up on, on my metrics. But here we go. Um, let me try to count combines here. We are. This is actually combine number eight, but we'll say we're number one. There is number two, three, four five six and seven number eight is still high oh there's number eight he was hiding behind that let's do it again one two three and four five six seven and eight so eight class nine combines so is it three s790s that are out here man and there's another one i think sitting at the dealer and then we got s690s from 2017. hello from farmer john and ky how many hours are on that combine? Uh, 35 hours so far. It's been out in the field three days. Corn is knee high in western Missouri. Yeah, that's good. It's it's get, it's been really popping here in western Kentucky the past week. I'd say we'll be starting to see some tassels by next week. Marcus, it is brand new. Just hit the field three days ago. Uh, Clorox bleach has asked if we if they lease. <laughs> The combines are by them. I, I will just say again, as I said a couple times, I just don't get in the farm's business um, on how they their finances and all that. But this is a family farm. It's been in this county, Christian County, Kentucky, since the 1800s. So they've uh, really built up a very nice operation through generations of hard work. Why is the harvest early in America? This is just here in Kentucky. This is when we always cut. You know, they'll be cutting in Ohio, uh, probably late June, up in New York in July. Uh, it's just the temperature you know they started cutting down in texas uh, in early may they'll probably be shelling corn in texas pretty soon do they have active yield and how is it working do you have active yield matt or yeah we do uh we had some issues with it but it seems to be working uh, so far the owner the 690s have the you know the manual yield calibration and ours is showing pretty close to theirs so i'd say it's working We've got 426 people watching this, Matt. That's pretty cool. How many days does it take to get the beans off? Uh, you know, beans are a little slower in the fall. It probably takes you guys 15 days to get beans between rain and dew and everything. It'll probably take the it'll probably take about 10 days here for these combines to get the wheat. Well, I'm going to take a few more questions, and when we get to the end of this pass, I'm going to sign off because we've been on, on for about an hour here, and uh, I want to get out there and film a little bit too. How many eggs of wheat does this farm have? About 11,000. How many cows? I think around 600 or so. No, it's not like probably about 300. 300, okay. Here's a uh, 9620R with a 60-foot horse like that. You might see his dust kicking up over there by the trees. So the, those air drills are just going to run these combines right out of the field as quick as they can to get the bean crop in. 
how do they pick up the down patches of wheat? Uh, I've got a question from England. Uh, this draper head just cuts right through them. It just lifts it up. What are my early thoughts on the S790 combine? It seems very nice. Uh, you know, Matt's the one uh, operating it here every day, and he's um, he's liked it so far. They haven't had any problems. Will I come to Michigan? You know, I have been to 33. I've never been to Michigan. I need to do that. I've got some friends up there, and I would like to film some of the farming up there. I know, I think you guys do a lot of cucumbers and pickles and sugar beets. It'd be kind of neat to see. You'd rather have an 8240. You know, I'll tell you what, uh, the Case IH Axle Flow is hard to beat. Uh, they've got, they're really nice. Do they own or rent the land? That's a mix of both. I will say they probably own a majority of their acres. Back to where that drainage spot is. Farmer John, I, you know, I like all the colors. Uh, you know, it's, they're all, I love seeing red combines, silver combines, yellow. But if it's a combine, I want to see it. I, you know, I get a lot of questions about, you know, what I think the best combine is, and I, I think they're all very good. If I had to pick one, I, I would say the modern day um, new nine series cleaners do the absolute best job. But you really, they're all so close in what they do. Does it have leather seats? I don't think so. No, we just got the the regular plus seat. Uh, this farm, you know, they. They have a lot of equipment, but they try to be as efficient as possible and cost effective as possible. Well, we're, we're closing in here on the end. I, I appreciate everybody watching. And uh, again, Matt, thanks for taking us up in the cab. I'll try to figure out to see if we can get this uh, to load up on YouTube so you can watch it over again. It's been great to spend over an hour out here in the combine. It says your screen went black. I got a phone call that may have cut it off. Uh, I want to thank everyone for for watching it looks like we may have cut off here I got a phone call and unfortunately that um, seems to have messed up the screen well I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off here then I want to thank everyone for watching big tractor power and we'll try to do a live stream again uh, in the near future up in another combine thanks for watching and I'll talk to everybody soon thank you